Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 15th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a diary by Rob about Labs, the local administrator password solution, which is a tool that's offered as a free download by Microsoft. The great thing about Labs is that it does allow you to set a unique admin password for all workstations within an organization. And well, it keeps a database of all these passwords so you can still log in. But if one of these workstations gets compromised, the attacker will only get the admin password for this particular workstation and the attacker won't be able to then connect to other systems in your network using these credentials. But Rob also took a look at the red team part of this particular tool and how it could be used by an attacker. Well, if you're using labs, then of course, administrators somehow need to have access to these passwords and labs provides for that. So if an attacker is able to access one of these IT administrator passwords, maybe a help desk password, then they may have access to the labs database, which of course stores all the passwords for all of your systems in clear text. So what Labs really does is it reduces your attack surface instead of being able to steal the common admin password from any system in your network. The attacker now has to compromise a particular account on a particular system in order to get this information. Of course, you could use a paper-based database or something like this to accomplish the same thing. The advantage of using Labs is that it's scalable. It's a tool that's supported by Microsoft. So much easier to assign random unique passwords to all your systems than doing it manually. And last week, Intel released an interesting patch for its software guard extension or SGX. SGX allows software to define secure enclaves in memory. So if you're doing something security sensitive, you can define one of these SGX enclaves and even administrators on the system shouldn't be able to access this memory. Sadly, the software that sort of implemented SGX had a vulnerability that actually made the system less secure by allowing for privilege escalation. This vulnerability has been patched now. So if you're using SGX, do apply this patch from Intel. It may easily have been missed given that we had patch Tuesday last week. And GoDaddy apparently has been injecting JavaScript into customer websites that are hosted with its hosting service. The advertised purpose of this JavaScript is to monitor the performance of websites hosted with GoDaddy. But of course, the same JavaScript can also be used to, for example, collect user statistics from these same websites. In some cases, the additional JavaScript, of course, may cause some ill effects on other JavaScript loaded within the same page and could potentially even break it. Now, GoDaddy actually states that this could happen. However, by default, this feature is turned off and you sort of have to find out about it yourself in order to turn it off. You're only affected by this if you're actually hosting a website with GoDaddy, if you're only hosting your domain with GoDaddy, but host your website somewhere else, then you shouldn't be affected by this issue. Also, it doesn't appear that they are intercepting HTTPS. And Docker, of course, is a very popular container technology, but as a container technology, well, it's substantially different from, for example, virtualizations and virtual machines. And one big difference here is that, well, all the containers are sharing the same kernel, and this can sometimes lead to vulnerabilities where these individual containers aren't really perfectly isolated from each other or isolated from the 
the underlying operating system. Latest example here is Play With Docker. Play With Docker is trying to do something fairly ambitious. Now, it was created by Docker in order to allow users to experiment with Docker, but it's also often used in educational environments for sort of the same reason, so students can set up their own little Docker environment and don't affect each other, so you just need one server to run all of this from. So researchers from CyberArk took a closer look at Play With Docker, and what they figured out is that by loading custom modules into their Docker container, they were actually able to affect the kernel and with that break out of their container and gain full root access to the underlying system. So if you are relying on Docker to isolate processes from each other, uh, make sure you configure it correctly, in particular, as in the case with Play With Docker, if you are using a privileged container. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.